It is now my privilege to introduce a gentleman who represents a company with decades of experience in empowering those who deliver care to advance health and well-being. Retired Army Major General Patrick D. Sargent serves as a Senior Vice President and General Manager of Oracle Health Government Services. Pat is a VFW Life member from the great state of Virginia. He was a dust-off pilot and oversaw multiple medical commands during his 35 years of Army service which included assignments as Commanding General of the Army Medical Center of Excellence and Commander of the 421st Medical Evacuation Battalion. Patrick joined Cerner Corporation in April of 2022. Oracle's acquisition of Cerner in July 2022 merged with the worlds of information technology and healthcare positioning the company as the largest health IT organization in the world. Oracle continues to modernize the electronic health record at VA, DOD, and U.S. Coast Guard, the Military Officers Association of America, and others, allowing easier access to high-quality health care for veterans, service members, and their beneficiaries, bringing us closer than ever before to realizing our goal of providing us all with a lifetime seamless high quality care. Please welcome our esteemed guest, retired Army Major General Pat Sargent. Hey, good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. All right, who are? Who are? Well, I can tell you that um, as I found my way out to uh, Arizona last night and I get off the airplane, I felt like I was back in Baghdad uh, with all the heat. But fortunately, I'm in a, in a suit and not all the battle rattle that, uh, that we wear when we are all deployed. I can tell you that um, being in this position and being in front of you is definitely an honor. And I don't take this lightly. I think for me, a person who spent 35 years of their adult life serving our nation, uh, having deployed as a company commander in Desert Storm of a force support medical company, I went back at the beginning of OIF as a evacuation battalion commander, uh, and then I went back as a brigade commander uh, running all the medical resources in Iraq for 15 months working for uh, Lord Austin, uh, people like Petraeus, um, and Odierno. But I can tell you that that all started for me uh, as a kid in Panama City, Florida. Um, and I was in junior ROTC, uh, and I can tell you that your organization, our organization, because I am a member who uh, that we are all about giving back to the community. And I received some financial assistance as a cadet from the local uh, VFW. And so for me, uh, you guys have been instrumental in my life and in the life of those young folk that is out there in our respective communities. Not to mention all the Christmas parades that I see you guys, that we participate in and showing people that patriotism uh, matters. I think it was Mark Twain who said, your life, that, that the two most important days in your life is the day you were born and then the day that you figure out why. And for me, it really hit me when I got that, had to take that oath, you know, to support and defend the Constitution against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Uh, when I took that oath, I was like, hey, I'm serving something that's much higher than myself. And in many ways, 
and as I've retired, and it's been three years that I've retired, and I say to people, I got more time in combat than I do retired. And, and so when I look at the, the, the folks that are here and the conversations that I've already had in the hotel, it's really refreshing and rejuvenating to be amongst like-minded individuals. And so I understand why you gather. I understand why you have the esprit de corps that you have, and it's very much appreciated, and I'm grateful for it. Ryan, uh, when he asked me to come out, I readily accepted the, the invitation. Tim, really appreciate this opportunity to share with your team. As you know, and was stated, I'm the SVP and general manager for Oracle Health Government Services. I believe I have the best job in the company because when I was recruited to come to the company, we were Cerner at the time. And we were having significant challenges with trying to figure out how to make our deployment go well within the VA. Um, and quite frankly, we had some technology challenges. And as we were bought by Oracle, uh, as I was telling Bob Wallace, who has been a huge mentor and counsel for me in how to negotiate some of the challenges that I've been experiencing with Congress, the VA, and a host of other people. And I really appreciate his mentorship uh, in that process. But as I, as I negotiate this space, I find myself being reminded of the, of the Teddy Roosevelt. And I think most people might fam be familiar with, the, with the, the man in the arena, okay? It, it's not the person who's the cynic. It's not the person who's aloof. It's the person who's actually in the arena, getting beaten, being pulverized, with the desire to be successful. But if not successful, you know that you've given your best. And as an evacuation pilot, and I know we have some Vietnam vets in the room, where are you? Where are you? I was brought into the Army Medical Department in fascination with the dust off pilots from your era. And I've met Novacell, Medal of Honor winner. And when he talks about when I have your wounded, that's kind of how I feel about this particular program. While we're having some challenges, we will be successful. And I will describe some of that as, we, as I go through the presentation here. But just know that the DOD, every medical facility in the Department of Defense is operating on the Oracle database in EHR. HUA. I can tell you that we went live at Walter Reed and Fort Belvoir. As a beneficiary, I received my care at Fort Belvoir and Walter Reed. Most recently, I was just determined I had a three-level fusion in my lower back, and I'm currently going through some eye treatment because I have a, some water fluid in the back of my eyes so I can barely see right now, to be candid with you. But I can tell you that before we went live with the system and then after, clearly there were some challenges. But one thing that is sure, and I can tell you that the military brings to something is called leadership. And I think everybody in this room understands that leadership is a combat multiplier. And I will tell you that for me, I have had to wait a little longer at the pharmacy on certain days. But when I got to the front of the line, guess what? My medication was free because of my service to our nation. And to me, we have to keep things in perspective. And I will tell you that those ladies and those, those men and women who are in the military medical department, they are using the system exceedingly well. 
We are live at five loca locations across the VA. And we are also live with the U.S. Coast Guard, with the uh, NOAA, and we're also in discussions with a couple other facility, uh, lo uh, federal services as well. I can tell you unequivocally that Ryan and your national leadership have been instrumental in helping us understand what your members need and want out of this system. So I can tell you that through me and my team, what you guys are getting is advocates within the Oracle Center infrastructure. And we are delivering on the contractual requirements, not because they are legally binding, not because of the financial implications associated with it, but we all see this as a moral imperative. This is something that we have to get right. Tim talked about that longitudinal, integrated, interoperable, seamless record. That's what we need. And that's what we're delivering to members who have served our nation. Having retired in 2020, I had to go out to the facilities that I had been treating in and get my, gather my records and take them to the VA so I can get a rating. I don't know how many people went through that. Raise your hand if you went through that. Exactly. Those days, in my mind, are over when we are successful with this particular process. I have colleagues who are getting care at San Antonio Medical Center at BAMC. They go to the VA in, in San Antonio and their lab work doesn't come over. It's like, give me a break. We're in the 21st century. We all know that there are 132 different instances of VISTA and they don't talk to each other. Last time I checked, you guys are all veterans and you travel. So my belief would be we need to have an enterprise system that delivers and provides you care where you are. I am advocating that we work through all of our differences as it relates to how we move about the system, but we gotta be, we gotta be fundamentally rooted in the fact that it's the veteran who has gotta be at the front and center of this discussion. And I can tell you that as I watched the PAC Act unfold, there was a whole bunch of people not approving and not voting for that particular document, that legislation. It was you who stood, and I'm, I'm, I'm assigned, in D, I'm in DC, I live in Lorton, Virginia, and I, I work at Reston. And the news at night, and I'm watching this, this play out on TV, and I'm saying to myself, thank God we have people in the VFW and other, and other uh, veteran support organizations advocating for us. You guys change the nature and the characteristics of how the Congress views this organization, but more importantly, the benefits that we receive. Being in Desert Storm, I was there when all the oil fields are ablaze, and it's 12 o'clock in the day, but it was like midnight because of the oil fires across, the, uh, across Kuwait. I don't think many of those people who voted against that legislation understood that or experienced that and I do have some complications associated with that. So don't take your power, don't take your advocacy, advocacy for granted. To that end, we, we have, we, we've, we've gotten some additional service level agreements because the challenges that we were having was with operational readiness of the system and it was unacceptable period, full stop. We were not living up to our contractual obligations. That said, June, we have a requirement to submit 
uh, documentation to Congress to kind of describe how the system is performing. And I'm pleased to report that for outage free time, incident free time, and this thing called P90, which gives us the ability to determine about the end user impact, we met all of those standards. As it relates to ticket management, we did not meet the standard. And we are working hard and aggressive to get that. Uh, Neil Evans, who is the EHRM program director, he and I meet every two weeks. We put, we put forth um, a re remediation plan because I think everybody in this room understands that this transformation is more about people, processes, and technology. It's not just the technology. And so we're working together jointly to kind of make sure that we have the right processes, but more importantly, the governance in place to get this done. While I'm gonna be able to only speak at the high level in this forum, I'm gonna encourage everyone in this room to join us this afternoon as we hold a fireside chat and we'll get to much more specifics and specificity with regards to the program. But there's a key, key points I wanna make. I already told you about the federal EHR is in all of the DOD facilities. When we went live at Walter Reed, and Fort Belvoir, there were zero patient safety incidents in that particular uh, deployment. And yes, absolutely. And I think everybody knows that Walter Reed is, is the most complex facility in the Department of Defense and likely VA as well. Uh, we know that our members of Congress and the President of the United States received their care there and they're getting their care documented inside of the EHR that we are, are unfolding. The VA is on a reset. Reset meaning that over the past five years, there have been different stages of the implementation. And we had challenges along the way with people, processes, and the technology which we own. That said, we're, they're currently working through the question of how do we optimize the system to make sure it works for the five site that is presently in. And in many ways, the VA is having to come back and say, maybe we put too many workflows in, and, and we made too many controls in the system. And so they are, re, they're re, they're re, they are now doing a reassessment of that to try to make sure that the processes aren't complicating the delivery of the healthcare for the providers in the system. We're also looking at how do we continue to take the, the, the inputs from this five sites and make it go system-wide once we resume go-live activities. And then lastly, we are going live and we are presently engaged in deployment activities at the Captain James A. Lovell Federal Healthcare Center in North Chicago. I spent two weeks, uh, I've been there twice with members of the VA, the DOD, because it's a joint facility, Navy and VA. And I can tell you that the Vision Director, the VAMSI Director, are very excited and they're looking forward to bringing this system live in March of next year. And we can talk more about that this afternoon. On the contractual agreements, I just told you about what we've done to try to increase the predictability with that. Um, this interoperability and the seamless delivery of care, we've made tremendous process improvement to ensure that our patient populations receive care no matter where they are. And our goal is to be able to put the soul 
back into medicine such that when you're talking to your provider, you're not being, uh, the, the, the technology doesn't get between you two. Being in the medical care for 20 plus years, I understand this thing called a therapeutic alliance. You gotta have a relationship with your provider. Current tools make it transactional and you can't get that level of alliance with your patients. But more importantly, we wanna be able to have some predictability. Our system has many safeguards inside of it. We talk about opioid abuse. Our system has caught over 1,500 instances where if the medication was provided, it could have caused some level of bad outcome. Predictable analytics inside of our tool to make decisions. I will tell you that I want to thank you for your time and attention. I want to tell you that may God continue to bless the VFW, and more importantly, may God continue to bless our men and women who are standing on Freedom Frontier on behalf of us in defense of our nation. My name is Sergeant and I'm a soldier for life. Thank you.